Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and it's raining outside. It's the middle of summer and it's raining, but I just thought I'd use that as an opportunity to finish this uh, Block 27, 26 uh, video I, I was considering doing, and it has to do with a recent purchase of mine, this Block 27. I'm using it appendix carry, and uh, with one in the chamber, which would be scary otherwise, because Glocks, uh, you know, don't have any external safety, but uh, this one does, and uh, we'll talk about it here shortly. Yeah, absolutely, here it is, the Glock 27, that's a 40 caliber, uh, subcompact Glock. It's the smallest uh, Glocks. Uh, they call them baby Glocks. Uh, but then there's a compact size Glock, the 19, uh, the 17 is a standard size. And this is not my first Glock. I, I did have uh, a Glock 17 when they first came out in the uh, mid 80s, I think it was. And I bought one and uh, enjoyed it uh, well enough. But uh, now I have this one much later, and uh, I, I really do dig it. Uh, but I did uh, add some upgrades and do some slight mods. And this video, I was uh, uh, really, it was going to have a whole different uh, uh, reason for uh, uh, putting out there. And uh, that reason was I was going to stipple it. I, I got this, and I thought, oh, for sure, you know, because Glocks are pretty slippery uh, uh, to begin with. But this one, unlike uh, my... Uh, Earlier uh, 17 has uh, uh, thumb uh, uh, or uh, finger grips and uh, some pretty deep checkering in those grooves and on the back side. So, you know, I, I took out my Dremel and I smoothed off all the logos and uh, trade names and stuff like that. Uh, just needless uh, propaganda and uh, marketing stuff. They want to tattoo their name on everything, even. This uh, mag extension had all kinds of text and blah, blah, blah. I don't like that stuff. So uh, here I was uh, getting it all smoothed out, getting ready to stipple it. And uh, I uh, kind of scalloped out uh, the, the space uh, under the trigger because that, even I, I recall that when I first got this, I recalled, yeah, that's right. That was a, a hang up area. And uh, sure enough, uh, uh, there are people now that, you know, recommend doing that, and uh, I took a note from them, and I said, oh, sure, I'm going to scallop that out with the Dremel, and it just, it just has a real good feel. It just goes right into the hand, bango. So I was doing all this in anticipation of, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Using this uh, little wood-burning uh, stippler, and... Uh, Speaking of that, I better unload this baby. There goes the mag. There's the one in the chamber. So we are open for business, baby. But uh, I uh, had this all smoothed out, as you can see. And I thought I was going to be real clever. I practiced, uh, I practiced on the uh, Glock case itself. And I figured, well, that's probably the same as the... Uh, body of the gun so you know I stippled into I don't know if you can see it there stippled into the uh, lettering on the box and got my technique down and I thought oh man this is going to be great I thought I was going to be even cleverer with coming up with my uh, my own uh, pattern and I was going to call it a waterfall pattern I was going to come all the way out here and just come down like a, a waterfall and not not for a pattern, but just so it's not irregular in its pattern, because that's good too, but uh, I wanted to have a nice uh, smooth uh, uh, draping of the uh, dots uh, going down in a pleasant way. Because, you know, if you don't do this this uh, stippling stuff right, it, it looks kind of tacky. It just doesn't look very good, but when it's done well, it looks real good. But here's the kicker. When I ended up getting this smoothed out and putting all my uh, upgrades and, and stuff on it, which uh, one of the last things was this clip draw, this little uh, uh, concealed carry clip, because I carry concealed. I don't have a, a, a permit. I'm anti-status. But uh, interestingly, uh, in this area, the state has reversed itself. And, and it, uh, you know, has uh, gone on record and said we're no longer going to be treasonous to their oath that they swear to, you know, uphold people's uh, right and ability to uh, uh, 
uh, you know, keep and bear arms, and uh, so they, uh, there's no requirement now for a concealed carry permit from those extortion paid people. So, you know, I'm not breaking any laws now, apparently. But uh, uh, this clip draw was one of the last things I uh, uh, upgraded on here because, you know, I bought a, a little holster. Uh, it was pretty cool and, uh, you know, it, it was semi-concealable, but I thought, no, it adds more bulk. And uh, I just didn't like that. These cargo pants that I wear previously, uh, uh, you know, I had a, a, another handgun that uh, was, uh, you know, kind of dated, and that's why I upgraded to this. I just wanted something more modern, a little beefier cartridge, and uh, so I got it. And, uh, but I wanted something that I would, you know, feel comfortable, it would be convenient, so I got the clip draw to try it out, and uh, I liked it. But then I, I thought, well, whoa, horsey, I, I better not stipple this thing, because I put this down, you know, my belly's getting a little fatter than it used to be, you know, I don't want a piece of sandpaper rubbing up against it so I thought let me see if I I can live with no stippling and uh, that's what I decided I'm just gonna leave it unstippled smooth is good these uh, grooves for your fingers are uh, quite nice and uh, it has deep checkering this is a, a generation 3 by the way the generation 4 is out now and uh, you know that you might want to stipple them I don't know so you know, not only will this go into one of my cargo pant pockets, it'll perch up into one of the uh, uh, added pockets on top of it, so I can just kind of hang the uh, uh, the butt end here uh, out of that and Velcro over it. So I can I can use those pockets as a, a kind of a quasi uh, holster. But honestly, the appendix carry position for seated and in other times it's really is really a surprisingly comfortable to me. But, you know, Glocks uh, are known for not having any external safeties. And I kind of like that, or I have liked that, especially for a holster carry, uh, that's a good thing. You know, with one in the chamber. Now, uh, previous, before I put uh, some of these uh, uh, upgrades on, I would carry it in that same uh, cargo pant pocket, but not with one in the chamber. So it was not only in a, a, a less convenient place for quick draws in the pocket, you know, you'd have to flip open the Velcro and pull it out with the other hand, and then you don't have one in the chamber, rack around, and you're good to go. But, you know, that can take two or three, four seconds maybe. And uh, statistically, they say even somebody with a knife, you know, he brings a knife to a gunfight, he's, he's going to win because... From 20 feet away, I believe it takes two seconds for him to be stabbing on you. The one I uh, do keep uh, or have kept is this uh, uh, CZ model. It's a 32 ACP, a Soviet era uh, East German one, and uh, you know it's it's a handy little thing to have. But uh, you know, at this stage in my life and uh, uh, this time in my life, I think it's it's maybe time to upgrade this thing. The cartridge is a little small, and it's kind of heavy, but uh, I just wanted to uh, upgrade, and I finally did. I, uh, you know, I'm a Christian anarchist, so, you know, I don't buy weapons with social security numbers and that stuff, because I don't have them. I don't use them, and uh, I'm not a U.S. citizen, but... Uh, uh, I did uh, purchase the uh, Glock 27, not brand new, from from a, a, a party, and, uh, uh, you know, I dig it. You know, I, I do. I, I haven't shot it yet. I've only had it for, I don't know, 10 days or so, but uh, I got a fairly good deal. Here it is. It's uh, virtually a, a stock. I made a list of the things that I did to my Glock, and uh, I'm going to call it the... Uh, top upgrades for the 27, 26, something like that. And uh, I'll list them here for you. You do whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, there is a criticism that people have about Glocks uh, in, you know, their kind of uh, slogan of Glock perfection. They don't come perfect. And uh, that doesn't mean they come bad, uh, but uh, there's a, a few points that, uh, I'd say two points, uh, three on a baby Glock, but two points in general that, uh, 
are poor for uh, the Glock. And one of them is the trigger pull. And uh, on this, it came with the standard connector inside here. And I changed that out. That's one of the first things I did. That's not what I'm considering the number one upgrade to, to do on a baby Glock in particular. That would be just taking, uh, getting a, a pinky extension on your magazine because the Glocks are very short down here. You only get two fingers on there. As soon as you put in, let's see the mag. As soon as you put in the pinky, you're on and you're good. It just feels feels almost full size and very comfortable, and very nice. And uh, but after that is that connector because the uh, triggers on the Glocks are universally kind of weird. Okay, now here's the uh, whole uh, lower uh, receiver. Uh, uh, stripped down and the parts are uh, exposed here and uh, I just wanted to show you the trigger group and uh, this uh, upgrade uh, mod I'm going to do. This is apparently a very well-known uh, thing to do to the uh, uh, trigger group to, you know, improve it. Uh, not so much mushy take up and uh, a little cleaner break on the trigger itself. It's this uh, three and a half pound uh, connector but then you bounce it back up uh, with uh, an eight pound trigger spring they call it the new york trigger spring uh, apparently the cops uh, back in the 80s uh, in new york city were freaked out by the uh, glocks so they they came up with this i think that's where the the term was coined from from uh, uh, it made uh, the trigger pull more like a double action uh, revolver so it wouldn't freak those cops out so much and so uh, it's well known i'm going to do it uh, the uh, you know, the existing trigger uh, from the factory is, you know, it's okay, but it's a little weird. It's all mushy up front, and then you hit that wall, and then it kind of breaks like, uh, you know, a stick. So uh, we'll see if uh, this makes a, a nice improvement. Okay, here's a little update on uh, where I'm at on this, and uh, where I'm at is a, a real good place. Uh, you can see I got this cider lock trigger installed, and uh, that's the one with the safety. The safety in the trigger guard on the trigger itself, uh, in addition to the uh, actual uh, Glock uh, uh, safety mechanism there. This actually has, uh, you know, a real affirmative snapping trigger lock, and uh, it gives a, a, a good tactile feedback. You know, when it's locked, you, you hit the, the tip of that point there, and you know that, ouch, you don't like that. So, uh, you know, you just snap it in and then you can uh, uh, fully engage the trigger. And speaking of the trigger, I uh, uh, installed that uh, connector uh, rod, the three and a half uh, pounder. This, uh, you know, is the standard Glock one, and uh, it's uh, called the five pound. But apparently, about five and a half pounds is what you get out of the uh, Glock trigger. And I think uh, I'm ending up with about a four pound. But uh, that. Uh, eight pound uh, New York uh, uh, compression spring I installed this initially along with the uh, new connector the the connector uh, came from uh, Lone Wolf and man is it a good one and uh, I say that because I installed that first with this uh, eight pound uh, compression string uh, spring the uh, standard one is a, uh, a tension spring and it's uh, rated at five pounds and it apparently works on a whole different uh, principle uh, in that uh, it pulls against the uh, striker spring whereas this one does not pull against the striker spring so it actually adds tension the other uh, tension spring if you uh, increase the uh, spring tension on it it will give you a lighter trigger pull so it's it's kind of crazy the geometry and uh, uh, how those mechanisms work but I installed this along with the uh, connector rod and man I wasn't liking it I was uh, getting what is uh, what is no over travel you'd see I would pull the trigger and I'd really have to mash on it at the end to get it to break and I thought uh oh what is that it, you know is that the uh, 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 slider lock uh, trigger so I, I took the slider lock trigger uh, apart uh, and you know uh, polished the surfaces and you can see I, I, I've now got a nice two-tone with that brush metal finish in there but uh, 
No, that wasn't it. I went back in and took out that uh, uh, New York trigger. It just didn't interact well with the uh, aftermarket three and a half spring from uh, Lone Wolf. But once I took it out, boy, this trigger is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know, we talked about uh, initially how the uh, standard uh, Glock trigger it has that uh, three eighths of an inch uh, mushy take up. Then it hits the wall, and then you it gets pretty stiff and it, it breaks uh, uh, kind of snappy after a, uh, another quarter of an inch and uh, this is completely different this is even straight through pull right to the break watch this I'll even use my uh, middle finger here here's my top finger but uh, just watch how clean and smooth this just pulls right through bang you know and there doesn't seem to be any uh, over travel there and you know uh, that's that's what people prefer no you know felt over travel but I think you need a, a, a tiny bit of uh, over travel just so you don't have to stand on it uh, at the end there with this uh, New York uh, spring this uh, little olive uh, green compression spring it uh, it it was a little spooky how, how you had to really mash it at the end, but uh, no more. This is just the nicest, uh, you know, one step change out to get a straight pull even. The reason why I felt comfortable in uh, appendix carrying this lock with one in the chamber was with this slider lock. This is an added external safety onto you see you just press the button on the side and it is now locked and it'll go both ways if you're a righty it's ready to unlock here but if you're a lefty you can flip it blah 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 and uh, the the beauty is is that you know you can be ensured that you're nothing's gonna uh, break that trigger you know it can have one in the chamber even point down at your uh, your jewels you know and uh, I feel comfortable you know I use this and worn this uh, not always appendix carry sometimes I just put it in the pocket but uh, I'm very happy that uh, the Glock can be uh, uh, made to have an external safety now there's other uh, external safeties that people add people do add a thumb safety right here and that's where you'll traditionally find a thumb safety I don't like thumb safeties uh, my previous uh, uh, handgun, I, I've still got it, it has a thumb safety, but it's kind of recessed. And so, you know, what I would find is if it was engaged and I couldn't really feel if it was on or off, I'd have to turn and look and, okay, yeah, there. And that's just, uh, you know, in a, a tough situation. You don't want to be fumbling around for that stuff. You, you either want to know and go or be able to hit it and, and shoot. So... I like the Glocks because they didn't have the external safety, but for appendix carry with one in the chamber, no, no. But now, yes, yes, this uh, cider lock is good, and it's about 50 bucks. Uh, that was delivered uh, tax-free. I think I got it through a, an Amazon seller, uh, free shipping and no tax from wherever they were located to me. One more thing I'm going to do is uh, put in the uh, safety uh, plunger with the softer spring, uh, the titanium one. It was, uh, I don't know, $21, uh, maybe a little shipping, no no uh, sales tax. And, you know, I, I've you know made it a point to avoid all sales tax. It's hostile ex extortion and, you know, it causes the sellers to be uh, unpaid tax collectors. So, you know, I'll point out that... Uh, when I order things on Amazon, and I just ordered something today here, this, uh, oh, it's uh, like the quick draw clip-on to, to the gun for a, a simple way to, you know, have have a clip inside your belt. I'm, I'm you know, exploring whether that's going to be a, a good thing for me. But anyway, you can buy things on Amazon. You can see it's fulfilled by Amazon here, but it's actually sold by another uh, seller be besides Amazon so there's no no sales tax on those kind of purchases and you know most often you'll be able to buy you know most products from other than Amazon on Amazon now Amazon has a, a so-called business presence in uh, I think uh, 25 or 6 of the uh, political fictions known as states 
and uh, they're uh, compelled to collect taxes in those areas where they have a business presence. And uh, so they don't have a business presence everywhere. So if you're in one of those areas, they, they don't. You know, you can buy from Amazon and not pay sales tax. Now, some uh, hostile state organizations, you know, don't demand, uh, you know, a cut of everything you buy. Uh, so, you know, but there, there are very few of those uh, areas left. Uh, but so that's one way you can do that. You can, you know, keep uh, that money in the productive economy because they, they don't lift a finger to do any of that. They don't deserve anything. They, they haven't done anything. They don't deserve a piece of that. That's my uh, attitude. So, uh, you know, that's just uh, another point to how you can make the world a better place is to uh, you know, shop in such a way, even online, uh, that you can avoid that. So anyway, uh, what I've also done is, uh, let me get away from that white screen, is uh, uh, installed this uh, aftermarket uh, slide release, slide lock, and uh, I've modified it a little bit by uh, uh, knocking off that uh, corner on the gusset there and uh, kind of scalloped out uh, the back side of it so it, it clings a little closer to the uh, frame. But while that uh, fence is still lingering there it kind of rides up on it so that's going to go bye bye I, i'll probably live with this uh mechanism it, it's uh it's quite good and i, I put another uh, uh spring in here a recoil spring and you can see it's uh it looks a little better than the old one the old one uh, you know looks a, a little cheesy but this has got a nice finished uh stainless look to it but it's uh, a lot snappier on the uh, release that's a 20 pound spring. This uh, uh, factory one was 16 or 17. So, uh, you know, theoretically that uh, sops up some of the recoil. And, you know, 40 caliber shell, uh, you know, honestly, I haven't shot this yet. I have never shot a 40 cal. And uh, so, but in such a, a tiny package, uh, I'm guessing I, I want to sop up as much as I can, keep that barrel flip uh, down as much as I can. Uh, so, yeah, we got that going. The trigger uh, mechanism inside, uh, I'm digging that. And this uh, cider lock, uh, uh, I'm digging that as well. And uh, here's from the other side. I'm just uh, liking it. Of course, the uh, uh, stainless steel slide is uh, uh, brilliant. Uh, no problem uh, in uh, installing and functioning uh, with it. Uh, the uh, All the sights that big dot brilliant they went on pretty easily I did have to uh, set this on some uh, emery cloth and take off a little material on the underside to get the slide in there but no problem so uh, this uh, this clip draw this this is identical to the clip draw Mac uh, mechanism it, it goes right on your uh, weapon so you don't need a holster you can you know carry it inside your uh, waistband and uh, but uh, the clip draw uh, actual trade name tr clip draw one I didn't like it it had all kinds of printing and warning around the uh, sides of it here you know don't do this don't do that you know we're clip draw, you know, all that uh, littered text uh, warnings and stuff uh, weren't on this one, and it was a little cheaper. It's probably made by the same same place, but uh, you know, it's not branded uh, clip draw, so it's uh, some generic uh, offshoot of the clip draw. Looks just like it, but without all that little text. So that's the one I got, and I'm uh, I'm just looking at that as. Uh, Possibly a method to uh, uh, carry not just in that pocket, but maybe in the uh, in the waistband, uh, you know, without a holster in the so-called uh, Mexican carry style. Because uh, I don't know if I would uh, uh, use uh, those with this uh, with one in the chamber still, but maybe with this uh, new uh, cider lock, uh, I'm I'm getting comfortable with this. I was carrying this today. Uh, mowing a couple of uh, lawns on a couple of properties and uh, you know it's the early times that I'm carrying it in a pocket uh, with one in the chamber now that I have this so uh, this cider lock is is uh, I don't know it might be kind of a missing link for Glocks it's uh, 
it's opening up uh, new uh, 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 potential to me, and that uh, that's leading into this uh, here because uh, I, I don't always want to have it in that cargo pant pocket. I, I may want to have it in a more you know ready condition, a quicker draw. You know, there's all kinds of kooky things going on. Uh, you know, not just with uh, guns, but uh, people are getting desperate. In my old uh, hometown uh, of Las Vegas, uh, a couple of years ago, a, a gal was in her car. Apparently, she was a homeless gal, but uh, she uh, apparently had some desperation, and she uh, was taking it out on uh, the tourists there, maybe who, you know, seemed to be more affluent uh, than she was, or maybe a little different color skin than, than she had, so uh, she literally mowed into these people with her car and killed, you know, several people. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're driving a car or riding a bicycle, you know, with one in the chamber, you know, you don't need a two-handed two uh, uh, uh uh, draw to uh, rack around first and then fire a shot so you know that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking you know ideally having a, a one-handed draw and a uh, uh, round in the chamber and then you know with this uh, cider lock you know it's right in the draw with that same finger you don't have to come back around with your uh, thumb I, I just don't like the uh, thumb safety so I'm, uh, I'm thinking this is just brilliant this uh, cider lock so you know, with uh, uh, a cargo pant uh, pocket, uh, and I do it as a cross draw. I don't keep it on my strong side. I keep it on the other side. I've got enough things going on my uh, right side with keys and wallets and other stuff that, uh, you know, I just tend to put it uh, on that other side. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, appendix carry uh, with that clip draw, you know, on, on my strong side. Uh, you know, I've kind of played around already with it uh, placed in that uh, area. And, uh, you know, it's it's pretty comfortable. This is a nice, nice size. And, uh, you know, uh, canted a, a little bit, uh, not 12 o'clock, but canted more like this uh, is uh, pretty good. But, uh, you know, I don't want to blow away the family jewels either, so, uh, you know, I'll let you know how that goes. Okay? But, yeah, I'm digging it. I am really digging it, baby. So, uh, yeah, those top three. The pinky extension on the mag. What else did we say? The uh, connector rod, the 3.5-pound connector rod, and the uh, cider lock trigger for a Glock. Now... You know, if you're if you're always going to have a uh, uh, some kind of a hard holster or something, you know, you might may, may not, never even consider the cider lock. But for a guy like me, I, I think it's brilliant. I just absolutely do. You know, when, when I put this in that pocket, that cargo pocket, though, you know, I don't have pencils in that pocket either. It's strictly the gun. You know, because uh, I don't know. Theoretically, if you had a pile of uh, marbles and pencils and other things and change uh, it, maybe the this could uh, become depressed and then ready to uh, overcome the you know other glock safety on the trigger but uh, with nothing in there it can't happen i mean it just can't happen and uh, it, it's probably a real heresy to a lot of people to uh, you know, introduce such an idea or a, a product onto a Glock, and that is, it's got a locking uh, trigger mechanism right on the trigger. You can just click it, and then you're free to fire or lock it. So, to me, for concealed carry, um, you know, depending on how and and uh, uh, what you're using to carry concealed, and like I say, I mine is in the pocket, and I just uh, generally. Uh, never have uh, uh, a round in the chamber and uh, you know that's frowned upon too but uh, you know I'm just not going to have a you know a, a, a fully loaded Glock uh, with no external safeties in my pocket and I, I really don't uh, like uh, thumb safeties and uh, so you know I, I have that with the Glock you know what do you do do you uh, keep one in the chamber or not Generally, I don't, you know, I'm not the only one. I think uh, those uh, 
ethnic cleansing Israeli immigrants uh, to Palestine. They they don't carry uh, one in the chamber. The IDF, the you know the real diehard Zionists who, you know, are pushing the Palestinians out of their homelands. They uh, tend to carry uh, uh, their uh, uh, firearms, handguns, uh, with uh, nothing in the chamber, and they've got a real peculiar style how they uh, uh, rack around and uh, uh, do that. They hold their elbows out and they hold the slide right up in front of their face and then uh, do the uh, slingshot, uh, uh, you know, grip and rip uh, method. It's uh, it's kind of interesting. But uh, to me, it just seemed like, uh, nah, I, uh, I'm not comfortable carrying a Glock in my pocket, uh, fully loaded with one in the chamber. Uh, but I do want to carry a one in the chamber. I, I still have that uh, tendency to want to do that. So uh, I'm going to install this trigger, this cider lock trigger. And, you know, uh, people all, already I've noticed uh, on the Internet, uh, you know, are screaming, oh, uh, uh, safety on the trigger. What could possibly go wrong? Well, 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 well you know, there's a lot of things that can go right. And this is not anything new, really. I mean, uh, you know, like when I was uh, talking about when I bought my first Glock in the uh, uh, mid-1980s, also in uh, the early 80s, I bought uh, what was a brand new weapon at that time, the uh, Mini-14, the Ruger Mini-14, uh, fashioned after the uh, M14. I used to qualify uh, with an M14 uh, on an annual basis or, or even more frequently. Uh, uh, and uh, that weapon was great. It had a finger uh, uh, safety in the uh, trigger guard. And, uh, you know, you just stick your finger in there, push it forward, and you're ready to go. I've listed 14, and that's a lot of stuff, but uh, uh, each of them uh, didn't cost very much. The number four was the uh, big dot sights. They're brilliant. Very easy to uh, get on target. You don't have to line them up in between and block your eyesight. Uh, my eyesight's not too good anyway, and you know, I'm probably not going to have my reading glasses on, so when I go to fire, you know, I want an easy lineup. And the big dot is easy. It's brilliant. And they're tritium too, so you know, if you've got this sitting on your uh, desk or table somewhere near your bed, and some intruder comes, you know, you're going to see those lights in the dark, and you'll go right to your gun. It'll be handy. All right, let me get those glasses back on. All right. Okay, the mag release extension. The uh, Glock magazine uh, uh, release is uh, it's very flush fitting, and there's it's problematic to do it uh, one handed from a grip. You, you got to readjust your grip, and it's it's a problem. And I replaced it, but. Now, you know, I, I think, you know, you, you don't need it. I bought an extended one, but then I filed it down and I put some grooves in it because uh, where it was sitting up in that pocket, it would, uh, it released a couple of times, you know, while it was in my pocket. So the mag was, was loose. One was still in the chamber, but just not good. So I filed it down to about where the standard one was. And I guess Glock just doesn't want, to, you know, dumb, Austrian soldiers hitting that uh, accidentally so they make it difficult to do it. So, you know, if you're a speed shooter in competition, eh, the Glock releases can be problematic. So you've got to design something around your holster and blah, blah, blah. But uh, so, yeah, upgrade this or don't. It doesn't matter, I don't think. Uh, and then also the uh, slide lock and release. I upgraded that as well. And it's pretty much the same deal. It's a little tough to do generally. Some people say, well, no, you want to get in the habit of, you know, releasing this way, you know. And other people say, no, this is good too, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, uh, make your choice on that. I, I use this one. I think it was $35. I, uh, I shaved down the corner, made it a little more trim and uh, elegant in how it uh, sweeps back that way. But uh, uh, I do like it, you know. It uh, is quite easy, but it still is out of the way. And as you can see, uh, there was a little, uh, a little raised fence around the uh, uh, locker release uh, on a standard uh, Glock, and uh, uh, 
uh, I uh, removed that because it just didn't fit in the same area. And I just uh, I just did it that way. Okay, the uh, slide spring upgrade. There's one in here. Uh, this is about a fifty dollar one. Uh, no tax, free shipping. Uh, I like how it has the nice flush uh, stainless uh, front there. The Glock one looks a little uh, cheap, and uh, the Glock springs have uh, the rod in there is uh, a poly plastic, uh, and some people say, eh, you know, replace them. But uh, I went with a little heavier spring. This is 40 caliber. Maybe it'll uh, sop up some of that recoil. We'll see. Uh, there's a safety plunger in here, and uh, I did uh, upgrade that. Uh, apparently, the spring on that is is a, a little stiff, and uh, you know it, it affects the the trigger uh, uh, breaking. So you know it was a cheap upgrade. I think that was 25 bucks uh, for the lighter plunger and uh, lighter spring. Oh, what else? Uh, the takedown thumb extension. These little babies here. You got to kind of really dig to get that to release, so uh, they make extended ones. I did it. I did it in stainless steel, just because you'll see. I, I did a two-tone uh, kind of uh, motif on mine. Uh, the stainless steel slide. Speaking of stainless, uh, this slide I got from uh, oh uh, Lone Wolf again. Brilliant. Brilliant. This was $174.95, free shipping, anything over $100, uh, no uh, tax paid uh, to those lazy bureaucrats. Uh, uh, so that's always a good thing. And uh, beautiful. You know, they got the uh, serrations on the front too for quick checks and all that stuff. And uh, it was limited to uh, stock on hand or it was discontinued. But uh, so, you know, if you're thinking about one of these, uh, move fast because. Uh, uh, man, I was happy to get one. I was, you know, had my fingers crossed until it was delivered to my mailbox, and uh, I dig it. Just because uh, the other one, it was used, and it had some wear marks, and stainless, you know, you can, it can have a brushed metal finish. It'll never tarnish, and it won't scratch uh, the paint off or other finishes. So, you know, I always uh, like uh, stainless and uh, brushed aluminum stuff. Um, the... Uh, there's an aftermarket uh, stainless barrel in here too because Glocks have a, a little bit of a loose barrel for, again, the dumb Austrian soldiers. They leave their stuff in the dirt and then expect it to work well. And, and the Glocks do work well when they're all dirty like that, but apparently it takes away a little bit of accuracy in reloading the shells because of the expansion. It's a little problematic for some reloaders, but... Uh, <coughs> Not that I plan to be a marksman with this thing, not at all. But uh, no, I just thought uh, it would complement well. And uh, I might have bought, bought that uh, Glock barrel, yeah, from the Glock store. I, I think it was $99, a good value. Um, the uh, stainless steel pins, this is a three pin Glock. And as you can see, it's mostly for the cosmetic two-tone effect. The clip draw, I got this... Uh, a generic version the the you know the uh, actually branded clip draw uh, I noticed I, I could be mistaken but it had you know kind of safety warnings you know text all all up on it and I thought yeah that's I don't want all that stuff on there and so there was a, another one on uh, Amazon that was a generic version you know it probably comes out of the same factory but none of that uh, you know clip draw name and oh don't don't do this, don't do that, we're not liable. Eh, I don't want that. So uh, I did find a uh, generic version of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm digging it. You know, the clip drive was uh, cheap. This one, again, 15 bucks generic, and uh, it works good. You never have to, you know, get your holster up on your belt. I don't wear belts anyway. So this will go in a pocket or right under the belt uh, area. So uh, it's, it's good. I'm liking it. Now for the uh, last part. I got, uh, you know, if you're considering buying a Glock 26, you might consider buying a Glock 27. Even though you might, you know, generally, uh, you know, shoot the uh, 9mm, which is what the Glock 26 is. Because the uh, Glock 27 
can take a conversion barrel so you can make it nine millimeter. And effectively you can have two rounds uh, through one gun for not very much more money at all. Not very much. So I did that. I got, uh, even though I, I, I think I'll like 40 caliber, I haven't shot it yet. I will before too long, but uh, uh, shot the nine millimeter a lot, like it well enough. But if I hate the 40 caliber, I can easily uh, slap this barrel in there. Now, you know, reportedly you could still use your 40 caliber magazine, put nine millimeter shells in there, and uh, it'll load and shoot and eject pretty good. But they say, no, don't go that route. Just go ahead and buy a 9mm uh, magazine for the uh, Glock uh, 26 and put it up in there and you'll have reliable, uh, very reliable feeding. The other one may be only pretty reliable. So reliability is a good thing and uh, I did. I bought the uh, barrel and the uh, magazine. The conversion barrel cost costs a little bit more than a standard barrel in 40 caliber 9mm. Uh, those, they were $99. The uh, conversion barrel uh, was $129, I believe. And uh, a magazine with an extension already uh, from the Glock store was $35, I believe. So there you're up to uh, $164 to make your Glock 27 also do 9mm. And, you know, you'll get a little more uh, capacity that way, too. So... It's, uh, I'm digging it, you know. I'm probably not going to buy any more handguns in my lifetime. Uh, I mean, I'll be 58 this year, but, uh, and I've still got that other handgun. And I used to have a lot of other guns, but uh, uh, not so much anymore. It's just stupid to have a bunch of guns to me now at this stage in my life. But uh, uh, I think this is uh, uh, just uh, my ideal preference gun for you know, home defense even, you know, it, it's, a, it's a concealed carry type gun, but to me, for home defense, it's just as good too. I mean, it feels almost full size. And of course, the, uh, the cartridge of uh, 40 caliber is uh, potent, baby, potent. So, yeah, here it is, uh, uh, the uh, top upgrades uh, in my mind uh, for uh, a Glock, most any Glock, but in particular the baby Glocks. And uh, there's no rank order beyond the three. You know, the top three for these to me is first get a pinky uh, mag extension on these babies, then that three and a half pound uh, trigger connector, and then consider the cider lock. Maybe not uh, even the cider lock if you're just doing exclusively uh, uh, a holster carry, then the top two would be the 3.5 trigger and the uh, mag extension, those two. But uh, all those others uh, are, uh, you know, worth considering too if you care about how things look. And, and some of them are functional as well. All right, so there they are. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh, I have arrived. I get uh, uh, really, you know, two guns for the price of one. I uh, what did I pay for this? 475 brand new. It came with extra mags and extra other stuff, so it was a good value. But when you uh, do that uh, uh, upgraded barrel, then then you can shoot two rounds, and, and that's a, an added value. But not only that. Since I bought uh, since I bought that uh, stainless steel slide, I still have the old slide and old barrel. I upgraded the barrel, so I got uh, the old slide and the old barrel. And uh, you know there are the uh, uh, P80s, the uh, lower frames that are uh, unnumbered, unregistered. They're they're not considered uh, firearms themselves because they're 80 percent uh, complete only. And you can buy those for about 150 bucks, and it's got a little jig, and you know you can punch out the, the spots where uh, it'll make it 100% functional, and then it technically becomes uh, a firearm. Just that lower portion magically turns into the firearm, according to those hostile state dictators and uh, uh, 
you know, so then you wouldn't want to send it to your buddy in the mail because uh, they, uh, those guys wouldn't like that. But what that means is if you've got an extra slide from a Glock like I've upgraded here, uh, you can undoubtedly take your slide and put it on one of those uh, unfinished uh, uh, lowers and uh, get another, uh, another gun out of it. I mean, uh, <laughs> it seems to never stop. You know, you get two guns out of this and maybe even make a third one uh, uh, for 150 bucks plus uh, probably another 150 in the little added parts. But I've taken off a lot of those things, the, uh, the sights and other things and the, uh, the uh, the springs, uh, so, you know, I, I'm almost there already. It's funny that way. So, I'll end here since it's a rain day and, you know, I've rambled on like a talking head. I, I generally don't like uh, that uh, so much, but this is a rain day and uh, this video will be uh, just a, a tabletop talk and uh, uh, because uh, blocks are fun. I, I dig them. Uh, a lot of people think they're ugly, but uh, Boy, you can clean them up, and uh, to me, this is this is about the, the coolest Glock on planet Earth, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, there's dressier ones. They get real elaborate in the slide uh, machining and stuff, but I mean, that's a pretty handsome gun right there. Okay, thanks.